Okay, folks, I'm back in the saddle, and there's a, a couple things I want to do in this upload. I want to talk about the importance of having good lighting when painting electric football figures. I'm also uh, testing some settings on this uh, camera. Uh, this is not being recorded in, in 4K high definition resolution. If I'm honest, I don't even know what resolution it is recording at, but so this will be sort of experimental. Uh, here's how it works. Um, I'm limited to 30 minutes uh, video size on those uh, 4K uploads, which is fine most of the time, but when we get into some gameplay videos, um, I'm going to need more than half an hour a lot of time. So that's why we're uh, testing this today, just to see if we can live with the quality at a, a lower setting. If not, then we'll boost it back to 4K in the next video. But, uh... Let's begin by simply doing this. Yeah, this is all about the importance of strong uh, lighting when uh, painting your figures. Um, the first uh, three sets of figures I painted, uh, uh, I didn't have good lighting at all, and it, it shows uh, when you look at them under a strong light. Uh, but now, with some a better lighting solution, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off since I'm not actually painting right now, and we'll rely on the the torch that include that comes on this uh, phone to to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. You can you can see your sins as you're painting these figures really well uh, with a strong light source, and that that can only help when you come down the road. It also helps you paint uh, your first coat much better. Um, as you can see, now all these figures have helmets on them, and uh, so much easier than it has been in the past because uh, of, of better lighting. We're just going to take a look at these, and uh, not just for uh, spot checks, but just to to admire our handiwork here. Um, okay, already I'm sort of doubting that that looks going to look very good when we upload it but we'll have to check now these helmets will obviously require a second coat but the hard work is done uh, you know the initial coat is on there okay and uh you might ask yourself how did you get such a smooth line across there well that one's not the best example uh, we'll move on to another one here. And, uh, yeah, there's a good example. How did I get such a, you know, a smooth line? Well, it's just one, one stroke, one brush stroke. Um, that's, you'll see some figures here in a few moments that, uh, I did not use one brush stroke and it shows. But, uh, I feel that the best way to get nice lines like that is to not sit and dab at it. To just go across it. If you get too much on the on the shoulders or on the uh, jersey, when you paint the jersey, you can clean that up. And uh, I, in my last video, I actually made the comment, I'm almost sorry that some of these look so good because when I apply the yellow paint to the jerseys here, uh, that's it's going to mess up some of these real nice lines and I'm going to have to take a toothpick and, and play the little tug of war game of, of cleaning it up. Now, as you can see there, I need to put a little more paint there on the uh, helmet above the face. And I will do that with a toothpick rather than with a brush um, on the next pass. And you can see a lot of scratchings. I, that simply needs more paint on it. And I anticipated that. Um, there's a nice job. And you can see that exposed, uh, if I can uh, focus there, there it is, the exposed, unpainted portion there between the helmet and the face. Uh, I'm actually going to use flesh tones to clean that up uh, because the helmet uh, is going to look pretty good, I think. Um, yeah, this is very helpful just to, to look at these through the camera lens and then through the, on the playback to see, and I'm going to be doing this again in the, uh, in the future as I 
get more of uh, the figures completed here with at least the first coat of paint on these things before I start cleaning them up. Uh, I need to revisit where the helmet meets the face there as well. Not too bad. You know, another coat of paint. And that'll look good. But without a strong light source, you can't see this kind of stuff. They all, everything looks great when you uh, paint in low lighting. Uh, so you can only uh, prosper from seeing your sins as you're painting and as you're working on these things so you can go back and clean them up now it's certainly going to add to the time it takes to finish a figure uh, need some more black paint on the pants there on uh, is that number 56 yeah that's for my own benefit i mean that's painfully obvious and you know i can't really see that with the naked eye but through the camera lens you could see some spots there that need more paint and of course the helmet needs more paint as well. So uh let's look at this one next. Oh, look at the scratches there on top. I may have done that. Or I may have just not put on enough paint. But that's a pretty nice uh for the most part, where the helmet meets the uh jersey. Now you can see a problem there on the shoulders and they're all gonna be this way to an extent because of the way these are designed. Um, they'll look good, you know, like so, but then when you look at them from above, this is probably not a good example. Yeah, back there you can see, oh, I got quite a bit of paint on the jersey. Now, once I put a, a second coat of paint on all these helmets, the next task, I'm going to experiment with um, uh, uh, painting just a, a sliver of white between the helmet and the jersey. Uh, more so on the helmet to sort of simulate the uh, white uh, padding on the back of a helmet. Uh, at least for the Pittsburgh Steelers helmet. I'm not sure if every team has that. It may be different colors for different teams. But I'm just going to use a toothpick just on the, the back of the helmet there. And um, if I don't like it, I'm just going to paint over it. But I'm going to go ahead and do that before I apply the yellow paint to the jerseys. Um, because I think it'll be easier to do before we uh, separate the colors, uh, the you know, the dark color with the light color. Another pretty strong effort there, in my opinion. Again, that portion there where the face meets the, the, the helmet there, uh, that's really nothing to worry about, and I'll tell you why. Because there's going to be a face mask glued to the figure right there, glued with Mod Podge. And uh, you'll never even see it. It's not going to look very satisfactory while we're painting it, but... Um, I need to apply some flesh tones there to the elbow on figure number 68. Hope I can remember to do that. There, you can see that I got a lot of black paint on the shoulder there, which we'll clean up with the jersey. But then we'll get some of the yellow paint on the helmet, and then we'll begin this, this little battle to clean it up. You have to look at these from all angles. You know, from this angle, that looks quite good, but then from above you can see, no, actually it doesn't. Put a little too much paint there on the right shoulder, and probably on the left shoulder as well. This has been the case with all the figures I've uh, painted, so I was definitely anticipating that. We're still looking at the lineman figures here, and pretty much all of these just need another coat of like paint on them and some of them the pants need uh, not this one but you know, I still need to put another coat of paint on some of the pants on these and some of the flesh tones that's oh pretty sloppy there on the shoulder again you know it looks pretty good from the side oh and see the exposed area that has not been painted there uh, I want to uh, address that I may also take a black sharpie and at a later stage and the completion of these figures and try to just uh, draw on the uh, sun shadow beneath all the player's eyes which you won't even be able to see beneath the face mask but we'll know it's there and that'll be pretty cool maybe at certain angles that will come through that's something i may try now i may have gotten a little timid now, it looks like i've missed a spot there on the helmet but what that actually is is the mold crease the mold seam between the front and the back where it comes together right there. Now if I paint that, it's just going to get paint all over the shoulder. 
such as the uh, such as the tribulations when painting electric football figures. All in all, that one looks pretty good. I did use a new brush, and as we go along, you can tell that the the, the new brush is becoming a used brush, and we get a, a little less definition and less uh, smoothness in some of these lines. Uh, this one, number 46, definitely needs some more painting done to it on the helmet. Yeah. Once the paint dries, I don't know if it shrinks, which is why we may have some exposed portions there that need a little more detailing or not. Pretty good uh, face makes helmet on these backer figures. It's, it's easily definable. It's easy to see. And again, we may use a Sharpie to put some sun shadow beneath their eyes. There are coaches out there who can literally draw the eyes, including the pupils and the irises, on these figures. They must have very uh, uh, selected, uh, selective tools for that job. I can't accomplish that with a toothpick or even with a, a thumbtack. And certainly not with a paintbrush. Now this one looks pretty good. Actually, very good. Again, some of these I'm sorry that uh, I'll be uh, probably messing up these nice lines with uh, the yellow paint. There's the color we'll be using, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers gold and yellow. I'm going to try to get the paint out of this uh, well so I can put more in it. Otherwise, I might have to use a different palette on the next uh, stage of this. But I'm going to try to put that you, the, the white paint between the... Uh, uh, helmet and the, where the jer yellow paint will be on the jersey just to see if I can simulate that padding on the back of the uh, helmet. It would be easier if, if the figures had necks, but they don't. And that's the way it's been since the, what, 60s? So, uh, you know, what can you do? Yeah, that one's kind of sloppy on the back. You can see where I put a little too much paint, but we can clean that up easily later on down the road. Um... Again, there needs to be a little more paint on the face. And just being able to see that. In fact, I can see that with my own eyes. So, we'll clean that up. Um, just for argument's sake here, we're going to really turn the, the lights on. I don't know if that's going to aid or hinder. Actually, now I can't see anything. But, uh, yeah, that one's a little sloppy. But that's nothing we can't fix. Yeah. And of course, we st this is still naked plastic right here, other than the primer. The uh, jersey. It hasn't been touched yet. With any, That's not white paint on the jersey. That's just a little primer. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, this is actually a little better. If I look down on it like this. Okay. So as you can see, having a nice, strong light is uh, advantageous. So you can see all these flaws that need to be cleaned up on the figurines. And more flesh tones on the face are needed up there. But again, that's going to be covered up by a face mask. But I still want to clean that up soon. I'm not done working on these for today. I've got something else planned for this afternoon and this evening. Actually, it's 4 o'clock here now, so we're, we're approaching the evening. A couple things I want to do tonight. That looks pretty good. Uh, certainly not a good line across the the brow. I have to clean that up considerably. But there's a good example of just committing to one single brush stroke and hoping for the best. You know, where the, the neck would be between the helmet and the jersey there, that's... That wasn't a lot of uh, painting, I mean, a lot of thought in painting. It was just, uh, just do it. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you get the paint in areas you don't want to get them, and you're going to have to go back and clean them up later. No. Now, a lot of people will use a gloss paint for the helmets, and I, I, that's a great idea. I don't have any gloss black paint, so uh, I'm just sticking with Tudor's paints, which I think are all flat for the most part. Um, 
or matte, I should say, not flat. But the gloss paints for the helmet to add to the realism of the figure. Brandon Sigers, that's what he does when he uh, uh, paints those uh, 808 quarterbacks that look real good. He'll uh, use matte finish paints for the bodies and for the flesh tones and then use a gloss paint for the helmet. It looks real good. Uh, we could sort of simulate that if we coated it in Mod Podge, but then we run the risk of that uh, milky film that I don't want, even if it dry, even if it uh, goes away in, in the months to come as it cures. I need a little more black paint on the helmet there. Uh, that's not straight. It was a little crooked, like the helmet's on crooked. We can fix that. I'll use a toothpick to clean that up. Look at the back of the helmet there. Yeah, that looks real good. Yeah, by the time we got to these uh, all-purpose figures, the brush was no longer new, so the bristles were no longer as crisp as they were when I just started with it. And you can sort of see that was not one continuous brush stroke there on the back of the neck there. And, well, it shows. But... You know, this is an ongoing process. Another coat of black paint should do it on the helmets. Uh, ooh, that one's a little poor as well. That needs to be uh, addressed. I think some flesh tones are in order on that. I think I put the... Uh, I painted too far down. In fact, it, it's like the helmet's covering up where his eye would be. If these figures had eyes, per se. Yeah. You can see where I got a little rogue paint on the shoulder pads there. That'll have to be addressed. And again, the brush began to betray me quite a bit by this stage. Okay. A little better that time. Need a little paint on the helmet on this figure. Ooh. Yeah, that needs to be... A toothpick is in order there to clean that up. Okay. I'll see things on the playback of this video that I can't even see right now. That's why I do this. This is, this is as much for my own personal benefit as it is for viewers. But I'm happy to... To share this because this is part of the process. This is how you get these figures looking decent. Get to just study them and see in what ways they can be improved. For example, we need more black paint on the helmet there, uh, just above the uh, where the left where the figure's left eye would be, his left, and uh, we can see when these figures need more another coat of paint either on their. Uh, uh, in this case, on the helmet or on the uh, pants here. And it looks like I, I did a good job on the second coat of paint on these pants. But, uh, yeah, again, I was too timid to, to put the paint where it needed to be right there. So that's just going to have to be addressed with the toothpick later on. Now we're moving to the uh, runner figures. There is a, an article, or I'm sorry, a forum thread on the Tudor forums, uh, you know, a discussion about the differences between the, the runner figures and the sprinter figures. And the one big difference is that uh, the runner figures are more prone to falling over because of this arm stuck out. It sort of counterbalances the weight in a different manner than these sprinter figures. Well, the arm is also sticking out, but the arm is not as long. Now, as you can see there, I actually didn't put enough black paint on the uh, helmet. That won't matter because of my little experiment I'm going to try with the... Uh, trying to make it... In fact, that already kind of does look like it has the um, padding on the back of the helmet. But and that bump there is not uh, where I did not paint. That's where the shoulder pads raise up as they approach the figure. This is going to be true on all the sprinter figures. If I paint that right there, it's going to get a blob of paint on the shoulder pads. And I know this, and the same thing over here, and I know this from experience. Just from looking at this and painting these before. OK. 
Okay. Again, I think this is really advantageous because if you just look at them from right here, these all look phenomenal. I mean, these all look like uh, they're professionally painted. But then when you get them up close and start looking at the uh, anomalies and the sins that you can go back and clean up later, still need to put some paint on that gentleman's hand there on his pinky, it looks like. And more paint on the helmet. Ooh, that's not too bad across there, but again, that doesn't matter. Even the good ones don't matter because when I paint the jerseys, uh, probably next week, then um, we're going to have a lot of cleanup to do. Again, on all these uh, runner figures, that bump you see there where there's no paint, where you feel like there should be paint, is actually the shoulders. And you can't paint that. Well, you can, but then it, uh, it it looks bad from you know bird's eye view, which is how you're normally viewing these figures. Example. See it? I did paint it right there. Or I tried to, but then I got a little paint on the uh, jersey. So. All right. And then at some point, I'll just, once the once these all have paint on them, including the uh, uh, the uh, jerseys themselves, we'll go back and, and do another video like this, where I'll just sit and rattle off everything that all these figures need. For example, this one needs a little more black paint on the right hip. You know, and that's why I've numbered them all for that purpose. So number 33, that means he'll be jersey number 33. And that'll help me identify all the issues that need to be cleaned up. You don't have to do this, but it's as good a way as any. Now there, it's a pretty handsome looking uh, figure as far as the paint job until you get to the neck. Or the, uh, you know, where the helmet meets the jersey. Then there's some problems there that we'll have to clean up on the next pass. Picking these up, by the way, can take some of the paint off them as well. That's why a lot of people don't like to paint their base plates until they're finished. I don't mind going back and retouching them. I just would rather see what they're going to look like with all the paint on them and then go back and put more paint on them if necessary. Your mileage may vary. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? For the most part, I mean, I did get to see I got a lot of paint on the shoulder because I wanted to make that look good there. And it does. That looks great. For the most part but then from above it doesn't but look back there look at that smooth line that nice curve i mean it looks just like the helmet meets the jersey and that's hard to, to do every time it's it's nice when it happens it tells you that you've got some skill even if it's accidental but then your self-esteem takes a hit when you uh you know, so you can see right there that I did bleed some paint over onto the shoulders. Again, because of the nature of the way these are built, the way these are designed, that mold seam. And again, it's nothing you can't fix later. So, obviously some... I'm going to have to really paint over that spot right there on the pants with the yellow paint to cover that up. Okay. Oops. I see already I need to give this another coat of paint. But, ooh, look at that. Look at that sin. Look at that mistake there on the shoulder. You can't see it from this angle. In fact, it looks like uh, the sin is actually you didn't paint enough. But, nope. Quite the opposite. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look great. But, again, we're going to obliterate those lines anyway with uh, yellow paint. In a couple of, or at least uh, a, a few days. I don't know when I'll get started on that. There's a good line. Uh, by this point, the uh, paintbrush I was using was, you know, I was, gonna, I was having to wash it practically after every uh, figure, after every helmet I painted. And uh, that's the way it gets when you, you know, when a brush becomes used. It, it just starts sucking up a lot of paint and uh, getting a little sloppy, so... 
That doesn't look too good right there, does it? Um, I mean, it looks like there needs to be more paint. Looks okay over on this side. But we'll just have to check some of these other figures to see if on the right side can... If I, that's just a, a error I'm getting continually. No. So, yeah. But look. You know, getting it right over here results in getting it wrong on the shoulder. Again, that's the way this works. Ooh. Oh yeah, by this point, I was probably getting fatigued, you know, because there's now there's only four figures to go, and I was probably getting a little sloppy. You got to watch out for that kind of stuff. You got to uh, maintain your standards, no matter how tired you are, no matter how close you are to finishing the project at hand. And uh, yeah, right there needs more paint overall. But uh, that's something you got to watch out for. This is going to take me a long time to finish. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, just like with the bears. But, you know, I'm working on them a little every few days. That's that's just the way it is. Got to clean that up there. The corners. More paint at the corners and a, a nicer line between the helmet and the face. It can be a, just a more definite, smooth line rather than all those little... I can't zoom in any farther to show you. All those little anomalies. You know, the closer, if we could zoom in really close, and we can't, you know, you could see all kinds of problems with these inch and a half tall figurines. You know, from from here, they look fantastic. And that's kind of how they're designed to be. Um, consider the figures we had back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even the 90s. How sloppy some of those paint jobs were. Uh, but, you know, from... From afar, from bird's eye view, they look just like the real team. Uh, whereas with the new Tudor figures, uh, those hold up to scrutiny very well at close range. I don't have one to show you right to demonstrate what I'm talking about, but the paint jobs are much better on the new Tudor figures. The, I'm talking about the, the factory painted figures. that they, they sell $15 for a set, plus tax, plus shipping. Did a pretty good job on that. Needs another coat of paint, obviously. And one more, folks. Can't believe I've sit here and yammered for 30 minutes. But there, you know, there is a method to this madness, and it's for my own personal benefit to, to just look at these on my computer screen and uh, be able to see some things that even now I can't see. And that'll help me clean these figures up and make them look even better. But there you go. All that's left now, of course, is the uh, the jerseys, the yellow jerseys. And uh, remember, this is a custom Color Rush team. And uh, I am going to experiment with uh, trying to put the white helmet padding on the back down there between the helmet and the jersey, just to see what it looks like. If I don't like it, we'll just paint over it and, and forget about it. My goal is to detail these in such a manner that the only thing we're going to be missing is the uh, uh, names on the back of the jerseys. Um the decals, I mean, this is not in any particular team, so there'd be no point in it. And those, you know, names, unless you do it yourself, unless you have the materials and the tools to do it yourself, those name jerseys can cost more than all these figures, the paints to paint them, and the uh, uh, the brushes and accessories. So that's just going to a concession that I will be making on these figures. All right, well, thanks for watching, if you even made it this far. If you don't, I don't blame you. Um, but as we can see, there needs to be a, lot, a second coat pretty much on all these. And uh, we just need to clean up the lines between the uh, faces and the helmets and uh, begin to experiment with those uh, white uh, helmet pads on the back of the, uh, um, back of the heads and go from there. Okay. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll uh, talk to you again soon.